All right, so good morning, everybody. Um, it's like a foggy, not foggy, <laughs> sun's coming through. Um, if you have any requests, just let me know, seriously. And let's just start right off the bat, um, taking a few steps in place and let your feet fall where they may. And um, the reason I say that is that as we go along, I'll just remind you to line the outside of your feet up straight. So just some nice deep breaths. If you can close your eyes, go for it. If not, just kind of give that gentle gaze through your eyes, um, the focus of attention. So it's not completely like, you know, you're distracted by the outside world. So just really nice deep breaths. Now, as you breathe in, your lungs really fill up and your rib cage presses outward in all directions, upward, down, <clears throat> out to the side, front to back. If you can think of it as a nice rhythm or round circle, right? So if you can, in through the nose and out through the nose or out through the mouth. Sometimes there'll be, a, you know, people have sinus things going on, so it might be, you know, mostly mouth breathing, but just try to be relaxed about it because the beneficial breath is in through the nose and out through the nose or mouth. And a little less just in and out of the mouth. So we want that parasympathetic nervous system, which is the, just the things we don't think about, your breath, your heart break, <clears throat> your heartbeat, all of that, just relaxing, just dropping down, being in the moment. Just think of a nice breath in, maybe a you can count to yourself, and then as you exhale, count to yourself, even up to five. In and out. So for the next few breaths, just put your attention on where the rib cage and lungs press down, you know, out on your belly. So the abdominal muscles press outward as you breathe in and they relax down as you breathe out. And just any thoughts coming through your mind that you're really <laughs> maybe stressed about or grabbing onto, just try to let them go by. They'll come by again. You know, it's like a, <laughs> a movie screen <laughs> of thoughts. So just let those thoughts come in and out, not really attaching to them, bringing your attention, your breath and your body. Good. And then just gently open your eyes if they're not open already. And if you can, keep the knees straight and hang over right from the hip joints to get a, a read on your body. How does it feel going up the back of your legs? Is it equal? Is it a little bit different? Um, does it even feel safe to bend over? Because if it does not, then that's your test and you don't want to force anything. Okay, so I'm going to come back up now. And then now go ahead and keep the sides of the feet straight. So you, some of you may feel a little pigeon toed. I'm about hip width apart. And then let your arms just hang. And then roll the shoulders up and over and around to the front. Okay, so we're doing big circles forward, just like this. So when you do this, pay attention to the scapula or the shoulder blades, that upper back, okay? So the upper back is the part that's doing the work, okay? So we really want to get the shoulder blades, the upper back to drive the, the shoulder joint, basically, to be able to move from front to back and around and down. And the arms just stay straight. Okay, so big circles. 
And now backwards. So if you have a little bit of shoulder impingement, I'll call it, like it's just tight, you can open the palms to the front of your body and it may just give you a bit more room to move those shoulders, the upper back really, around and down. The scapula, or that's uh, at the moment, it is kind of like, think of it as scrubbing your rib cage and all those fascial tissue underneath your shoulder blades, okay? So really nice breaths coming in and out as you do this. Make those shoulder blades come, <laughs> scrub the back. One more backwards, I know I'm doing a lot more than 10, and then forward. That's generally, like if I were to give somebody directions on these exercises, you know, I'll do two or three sets of 10 in each direction. Now my thumbs go forward again, but I'm not really thinking about numbers. I'm just talking you through it so you really stay present to what is supposed to be moving. Okay, so big circles forward, one more forward, and let's go back again. And just think of your spine getting nice and long, right? So I'm really reaching up through the top of my head, my spine through my back, all the way down to my sacrum is lengthening. Okay, a couple more, let's go one and then two. Okay, so now let's stand sideways to the wall. I'm gonna show it to you first this way. Chest openers for you guys that know this one. Hand goes straight out from the shoulder joint and my body is straight, feet straight, and then rotate the arm front to back, okay? In the shoulder socket. So I'm really pressing my hand into the wall. I'm gonna bring the camera a little bit closer just so you can check this out. Not that you can see a whole lot, <laughs> front to back. And you guys know this one. Okay, and let's switch sides. So since I know you guys do this on your own, <laughs> think of like, you know, 10 to 15 on each side, because this goes pretty quickly. When you first start this, or there's something going on in your upper back, um, and therefore probably your shoulder, you may feel some uh, tightness down the arm, right into the hand. You might even feel nerve, like a sensation of tightness or tingling, okay? So always, you know, respect your body. If it doesn't feel right, just drop it for now. Okay, switch sides. Blink. I'm really hoping somebody has a good joke at the end. I think <laughs> I had somebody tell me a joke, so I'm thinking of how how it goes, so I tell it right. Front to back. And notice which side. Hey, is one side tighter than the other? What's going on? Okay, switch sides again. So we're nice and equal here, right? Make sure the ankle, knee, hip, joint are all lined up over or under, I should say, your shoulder joint. You're not sproinging your hips forward. Okay, so let's use a wall if you have that convenient to do elbow curls. So I'm gonna put that right here. So if you don't have a wall, it doesn't matter. Um, you can pretend like you do, but I'm gonna stand against the wall. Heels are against the wall, feet are straight. I'm gonna scrunch the ends of my fingers. I'm just gonna show this just to be clear, okay? And those, my first and second knuckle basically go right at my temples. I'm gonna rotate those knuckles on my temples. The elbows are relaxed in front of my chest so that <clears throat> the arm is just nicely in the arm socket. <laughs> and I'm moving, again, I'm kind of my attention is coming from my upper back so that you, can, you really feel like, okay, my shoulder blades, my upper back, move the arms. There's lots of other muscles involved here. Um, if it's hard to do this, you know, you might have to, sometimes people have to spread their fingers wide, like not do the knuckle thing. And that will give just enough room to really be able to do it. So what I mean by that, keep going on this, we can do 500, right? That would be like that if I came up close, okay? 
Sometimes people have to do it with their hands behind their head. It just depends on the shoulder joint. Okay, that's beautiful. Now, step away from the wall, scrunch the ends of your fingers again <laughs> into that, I call it the karate chop position, and then arm circles. So the palms are down and my uh, hands and arms are rotating forward, up over and down, reaching through the knuckles. Feet are straight. Again, that lovely upper back doing the work. You know, if let's say one shoulder is just, uh, it could be frozen, it could just not want to go up, something's going on, you can do it with one arm. Because remember this, neurologically, if one side is doing the work, it's teaching the other side. Okay, flip the palms up, keep the scrunched fingers, <laughs> and then go back up and over. Whew. Pushing through the knuckles, that upper back doing the work, so the arms. I always think that like the arms are going for the ride, not your arms doing the work and then maybe other things are moving, <laughs> right? Okay, good, relax down. Okay, I'm gonna kneel so you can see this closely. I'm gonna do a um, tricep stretch, which really, um, I'll explain in a second. Grab underneath in the elbow. My hand is on top of my shoulder joint. I'm gonna brace that elbow outward so that my hand goes straight down my shoulder blade, okay? And as you stand there, of course I'm kneeling, but just pretend like I'm standing. I wanna make sure that when I push it back, my rib cage doesn't go flying out so much so that my hips go with it, okay? Want to um, keep that shoulder joint in line in the socket, okay? So the hand goes down the scapula. Nice deep breaths. I'm gonna stand up now. Okay, do it sideways just so you see. So ankle, knee, hip joint, shoulder joint, um, all stacked over each other. Just take some nice deep breaths and everybody's gonna have a whatever degree of being able to push their arm back, okay? So respect the shoulder joint and the upper back. Your shoulder joint gets tight or hurt because there's a lot of different muscles that can lock your, your upper back down which jams your shoulder joint. Okay, bring the, arm, the <clears throat> elbow down, other side. Um, uh, the thumb bracing that inside of the leg, the leg, I looked up and I saw my leg and I was like, okay, I gotta make it straight. My, my elbow, excuse me, my forearm. And then reach the hand down your shoulder blade. And nice deep breaths. I'm gonna have to take this black shirt off, keep going. I'm just going to do that. I'm going to go about a minute. There. Nice deep breaths. Really try to feel the difference left to right. right? So you don't um, just kind of do it blankly. Now, the goal on this is that you actually feel it under here in the rib cage. This is the part. A lot of these muscles drive the position of that shoulder joint. Okay. Good, okay, relax down. Um, let's do this. Take, uh, no, let's make your feet straight. Just like this, I'm gonna turn sideways, not like you can see this, glute contractions. Okay, so you're squeezing and releasing your glutes. And if this is hard to do, turn the feet outward and you'll find, oh, I think you'll find your glutes. So there's no ab work in this, okay? It's just the glutes. I was um, explaining to a client yesterday that, you know, just, wasn't isn't moving as much as she used to and realized wait that's not working for me <laughs> so um the glutes you know they shut down so lots of times if you go to the pt because you've got back problems your back is locked up the physical therapist will work on the glutes which is great but if we don't correct everything the whole chain those glutes are still going to go to sleep. So the whole point of this work, what I do, which I love, is that if you do it every day and you have your own special set of exercises, 
it wakes the body up so you're not think you don't have to think about it like oh i have to pull my shoulders back you want to get things to fire naturally lots of other things that go with this <laughs> like your mind okay now pillow or um squeezes with the block okay so if i have the yoga block i'm going to put it up high only because it's hard and it doesn't feel so hot um on my knees if i have the egoscue block then i'll stick it there between my knees so feet are about hip width apart and they're close enough that you can keep your legs straight and there isn't a lot of um angling of the knee inward so i'm really just pushing straight in from the hip joint, from the top of the hip joint, through my feet, and my feet are nice and straight, and just find that place where you can, you know, squeeze it, but you're not over-exaggerating it so much that, you know, your, your knees go knock need. okay? So just squeeze and release, and notice if you feel like the weight on your feet might be more even, not that I pointed out they could be uneven, that's up to you. <laughs> and so you're just squeezing and releasing so that you can really feel how the legs work from the hip joints down to the feet. Squeezing and releasing. Good, so we did the glutes. We're now doing the, the inner part of the leg, but does anybody also feel this in their glutes? sort of an equal and opposite reaction all over the body because guess what it's connected okay let's take the block out let's do this um uh let me think about this for a oh i know so you're going to take your feet wide feet go out we're going to do the spaghetti arms bend the knees okay so my arms are kind of relaxed and i'm going to bring swing them left to right and my head follows that action and when you do it really ground through your feet okay so you're pushing up through your feet right up through the hips it turns the spine your feet are the grounding part of your balance your body your awareness to the earth and the ground and just let those arms go kind of waking up the kidneys so to speak or literally Good. And then just come to a stop, and then we're going to do anatomy and motion. So I'm going to start with my right foot back. So I step back, reach to the front leg, come forward. So as I step back, my right foot just turns out enough so that it accommodates my knee. And it's a, a feeling of bowing. Of I always like to think of this as just being a graceful kind of honoring motion. So as you step back, my heel stays right where it is. I just hinge on the floor or the ground by flexing the ankle. So that means my toes come back up towards my kneecap. My upper body stays really tall and long. Okay, stepping back, reaching to that leg. Okay, let's go for one and one more. That would be two. <laughs> okay, other side. Step back on the left, reach to, whoops, to the right. I lost my balance because I was trying to see who the, <laughs> the kayaker was out there on the water. Yeah, <laughs> reach to that right leg. So step back on the left. My left foot slightly turning out. I'm just gonna turn this way. So maybe you can see, right? <sighs> And my heel, it's really grounded into the floor. And I get a nice pull right from the back, like my heel, bottom of the foot, all the way up the leg to the back of the glute. Okay, one more here. Good. I'm going to turn my back to you because I'm going to go out to the side. So I'm going to step out to the right, turning my foot a little bit to the left, reaching to that left leg, 
step out, turn on the heel. So again, the balance comes from you stepping back because that's going to, you know, it's like you're stepping back, but your heel, this in my case, the left one is the grounding force because I'm pushing, I'm pushing it down into the ground basically. And I'm turning on it and getting a nice stretch through the back of that leg, reaching, stepping out. So this is mimicking in a very um, simple way how the actual pelvis and the hip joint, the leg femur, should move, okay? So these are exact, well, they're basically exaggerated motions of your walking gait, your running gait, you're just being a human gait person, <laughs> a human. Good, one more, here we go. Let's step to the other side. So I'm gonna step out to the left, Reach to the right, back in. Step out, turn on that heel, and then step back in. Um, I was working with some people outside a while ago, and one thing to really remember is stepping back in. It, it's interesting to me because I noticed sometimes people will step out, and then they don't want to step back in. So. It's basically returning back to your starting position. So I step out to the left, turn on that right heel, twisting towards it. Oink. There we go. Emma, one more. Okay. Stepping out. Okay, so let's test the hangover again. Just like that, nice. All right, come back up. Notice if that's better, worse, the same. And then what we're gonna do is go on the floor with the feet on the wall. So I am gonna bring my, I'm gonna attempt to do this correctly today so you can actually see my head. Okay, so I'm gonna go on the floor. My feet are gonna go on the wall. I'm gonna take the strap, okay, the yoga strap. I'm going to bring it over both feet and above your knees. So I'm going to tighten it down so that I'm going to turn it so you can see that's about the width. Um, it, it makes it so that my femur is right in the, the hip joint. And feet are on the wall. Lengthen your back. Let yourself relax in your upper back. Press out on the strap and release a little bit, but not completely. So you're pressing, really driving that work into your hip joints. Press out and release a little bit. So whenever we're moving around like wall or whatever, whatever I'm doing, make sure you have at least one block in the strap with you. So I'm just telling you that in case you got on the floor and your block is over on the other side of the room. Okay, so you're gonna press out and release a little bit. So it's not a completely release, it's a pressuring out, a little bit of a release out and a little bit of a release. I just want you to feel this, how that just the strap alone really moves into your sides of your hips and probably into your glutes and your sacrum. Okay, if you don't know what the sacrum is, look it up. It's a really good thing to know your anatomy just a little bit. I can go over it later. Okay, so now take the block if it's the Egoski block, it's gonna be this way, between my feet and the ankles. My feet are nice and flat on the wall. I'm gonna press out on the strap, in on the block and release. Out on the strap, in on the block and release. Just so you can see it with the yoga block. I will show you. Okay. In, out on the strap, in on the block, release. A little bit release, All right? So. Relax the upper body. Oh, and let it go. Oh, and let it go. Pressing out, pushing in, releasing. And releasing. Nice deep breaths. And now when you do this, think of just really drive that work all the way up from your feet through the strap up into your 
pelvic area, okay? Good. Let's go um, for five more. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, now let's switch it. So the block is gonna come up at your thighs or your knees. You're gonna tighten the strap down a little bit. You have to kind of play with this to make it the right distance um, to make sense for your body to feel the press in and push out on the strap. Straps at my ankles. I kind of lead with my heels so I can really feel the sides of my feet stay pretty straight. So you're gonna press in, push out, and release a little bit, you know, and you're not rushing this, just really feel that work, work, move up the legs. If there's any knee tweak, adjust the distance of the strap, whether it's in or out. I don't, there's no universal exact way. It's for you to decide based on how it feels, okay? So press in, push out. Just a reminder again, if anything hurts, skip it or modify in some way. So it's good to hear how you guys have done that. Um, from my perspective, it's great to know. So pressing in, pushing out, pressing in, pushing out. So by the way, not using my abs, not moving my pelvis. And now hold the pressure on the, actually, let's take the strap off and you're just gonna hold the pressure on the block, okay? Interlace your hands under your head. You guys that are just doing the feet, you're gonna lift and lower your feet because maybe there's a shoulder issue. Squeeze the block, pull the elbows back, look back behind you. I am gonna lift up my head, the elbows and the upper back just a little bit, but keep the neck straight and the spine straight. And balancing, think of balancing water or whatever your <laughs> desired drink is on your forehead. You've got glasses of it, forehead, your chin, and your elbows, okay? So you're trying to bring it straight up to the ceiling and then touch back down and come right back up. So up and down, up and down, up and down. <sighs> If you have to, sometimes people have to modify, you know, crossing their arms. It's a little bit harder on your neck that way, probably. Um, not always. And if you really are just doing it from your legs, your feet, you're up and down with your legs, you might want to just put your feet on the floor. It's not a lot of action from the wall to your abdominals. Okay, so as you guys are doing the regular crunch, which is what we're doing now, pull your feet off the wall and you're more in a tabletop. So you're holding your legs up. Keep the lower part of your legs parallel to the ground. Remember to breathe <laughs> up and down. So we're levering from way down between your legs because your abdominals wrap down between your legs, your pubic bone and around your up lower back, up down, up down. I'm doing this one for time. So that was a little over a minute. Okay, good. Just take a short break. Reestablish your hands under your head so it's really supporting. Feel the shoulder blades kind of in, um, contract just a bit or what am I trying to say, engage. Okay, so let's go left to right diagonal. So again, this one is coming from way down where the abdominals connect on your pelvis. So think of turning from your belly button. Okay, you're twisting from the belly button, left to right, left to right, left to right. Squeezing the block. Think of breathing as you go. Actually, don't just think of it, do it. <laughs> So rotate left to right, left to right. Again, you're balancing, you're still balancing water, whatever it is on your forehead and your elbows. And you're just trying to make as little movement um, 
so that you don't spill it on your chest. So left to right, of course, <laughs> you know, probably spill it, but you know, you know what I mean. So squeeze that block, don't let that go. You guys that are doing the diagonal, you're gonna do a diagonal left to right with your legs, okay? Okay, let's go into tabletop. Keep going left to right, <sighs> left to right, left to right, left to right. Really think about pulling up from your belly button. Squeeze that block. <clears throat> okay, good. All right, relax out of that. Take the block out. Feet are hip width apart again. And out and in with your legs. So you're going out to the side of your feet. My soles of the feet come off the wall and face each other as your knees go out. So when I do this, I kind of press the side of my foot into the wall. So I can feel that action going all the way up my hip, I'm sorry, up my legs to my hip joint. And you can play with this a little bit. Sometimes I'll kind of extra push my back into the floor. And um, as I press through the side of my feet, back and forth. Push out and in, out and in. Out and in. If you have room, go a little bit wider with your feet and just feel the difference. So it, you might be able to, like for me, I can feel the um, line down my leg a little bit more. In and out. In and out. In and out. Okay, good. Now, right from here, bring your legs straight up the wall. Okay, so I'm not moving into the wall right now. Just for a moment here. Flex the ankles, pull the little pinky toe side down as much as the inside, okay? Tighten the thighs. So just really work on tightening the thighs, push through the heels. Your upper back is nice and long. <sighs> Tight thighs. Nice deep breaths, relax your shoulders and your face and all of that. And now bring your feet a little bit wider and then rotate out and in. So as I do this, my feet are just going for the right. It's all work from my legs. It's not my, my ankle really isn't moving at all. It's just the whole leg and foot are moving with the out and the in. Just reaching through those heels out and in. Good, okay, so now bend the knees again. Cross your right ankle on the left knee. If you have to lift your butt up off the floor to get this ankle, by the way, ankle bones all the way on the other side of the thigh. Okay, if you have to lift your butt off, you might wanna either move back or just put your left foot on the floor. So my right ankle is on the left knee, pressing the right knee towards the wall without my hands. Okay, I'm just using my hip muscles to do that, do this and all those supporting muscles, supporting actors and actresses. So kind of just get an idea like, oh, is my right hip tight? How does that feel in my back? What's going on? Okay, now switch sides. Okay, and just feel that. So you're gonna put that left ankle on the right knee Press the left knee towards the wall or the floor, depends on where this right foot is. Lengthen your back, relax your upper body. You can reach your arms over your head. I like to do a big stretch, feels good. You know, I'm, I'm a big encourager of trying to feel the connection between what you're doing. In this case, you know, we might be sort of stretching the hip joint but how's it feel in your upper back in relation to each side, you know? It's not a, a separate thing. It's 
you know, you might discover, oh, every time I do something, I notice my right rib cage or shoulders tight. Okay, relax out of that. Let's do this. You're gonna go onto your stomach and we're gonna do commando crawl. I'm gonna move the thing again down and commando crawl looks like this. And let me just adjust this a wee bit more. So you start with either leg, your hand, your hands are under your forehead. I'm gonna bring my right knee out to the side and um, really kind of reach the knee away from the hip joint. And what I do is press my knee and ankle into the floor to get a pull um, on the inside of my groin, okay, on this right side. I'm gonna take a drink of water. I always encourage people to drink plenty of water. I put vitamin C in mine and trace minerals. So I'm always loading up on that. <laughs> okay, switch sides. Well, not always, I shouldn't say that. I often do. Okay, so my knee and ankle are stacked over each other. My knee is out from my hip joint. I'm reaching my knee away from the hip joint and kind of pressing the groin towards the floor. But to really get that, I press the knee and ankle into the floor. Good, and then switch sides again. So I'm just turning so you can see. And some of you like to do this up on your elbows in the modified cobra position. That is great, go for it. If that's what feels right on your body, switch sides. So notice which, notice which side is tighter. Sometimes what I do too, I'll straighten my leg out and get a nice big stretch out to the side. Good. Okay, so now let's take your uh, knees wide, put the soles of your feet together. Press and release the soles of your feet. Press and release. Press, release. Now lengthen your body, press, release. Press and release. Press release. So as the soles of the feet press together, and I do recommend this with, you know, no shoes on. It's really hard to do with shoes uh, for most people. Is as I press my feet together, it activates my muscles in my legs. I feel a lot on the inner part of the leg, but then the result at the end is that the glutes contract, hamstrings to glutes. So the result of pressing the feet together is what fires the glutes and not so much the other way around on purpose, okay? Okay, two more, one and squish it in two and then bring your knees together. So they actually touch. I'm gonna to turn my knees towards you so you can see this, okay? So ankles are flexed. I bring my feet outward and then inward, outward, inward. Do this with control, especially you all that have like a tight low back, okay? Hopefully we've set you up right so that there's no issue there and you're able to do it. Like for instance, let's say you started class and your back was really tight and I just did this first. You might not be too happy <laughs> for the rest of the class. <laughs> so hopefully you're happy right now. Hopefully you're getting happier and happier, how's that? So knees, if they start to gravitate away from each other, push the knees together. Okay, one more, out and then in, and let's do a floor block. So floor block, I'm gonna show you the blue blocks because it kind of shows up nicely. One minute in each position, there's three positions. Start with this um, blocks a little bit wider than your shoulder joint, but not too much. I'm gonna do that grip again with my hands, curl the um, fingers, or the, sorry, the knuckles at the end. My forehead's down on the ground, tuck the chin. I do suggest don't turn your neck because it's a, it's a torque on the cervical spine, the neck um, vertebrae. And we want to get your whole body straight and working together. So turn the arms out. You don't have to do this on blocks if your shoulders are 
protesting a little bit or your upper back just doesn't want to do that um, or can't do it, don't force it. Just turn the arms out. Again, this can be done straight on the floor. It can be done on higher blocks like the Agassiz blocks. Relax your butt. Let your heels just relax as well. Rotate those arms outward. About 10 more seconds. A little bit of engagement in the shoulder joints, I mean the shoulder blades. You'll hopefully feel it more. And now what we're gonna do is go to the second position. So that's the Y. Re-engage the hands. My blocks or my hands are up on the blocks. I've got part of my wrist and forearm, maybe a little bit, and the hands. But I don't put the block all the way up towards my elbow because I find you can get more engagement if your hands are just on the block from the hands to the a little below the wrist. But play with it. You know, how many millions of people are in the world with different things going on <laughs> can be the judge of where to put the block relax your butt lengthen your body turn the arms out now really do engage that upper back the shoulder blades sort of come back and down but i'm reaching through the knuckles and the arms and now go out to a T position, so that's straight out. Re-engage the hands, definitely walk that body longer. I'm gonna turn this way so you can kind of see this, this angle too. Pull the shoulder blades back and down. And I do really use my upper back to kind of turn the arms back. Relax the butt. I we go left to right even so you can feel, hey, is my rib cage, what's happening? Is it unwinding? What is it? Feel it, feel it. Okay, good, relax out of that. Let's do this. Um, go over on your back. You're going to cross your right ankle on your left knee. My ankle bones all the way on the other side of the thigh. Lengthen your back, arms are out to the side, palms up. So you're either gonna press the right knee away and hold it like that. Don't let this left hip go kicking off to the left, but you're right. Okay, so you're pressing the right knee out, pull the left foot off the floor, but only if you can press the knee outward without it kind of coming in towards your face. Otherwise, the left foot is gonna stay on the floor. So push, pull, push, pull. So it's a lot of, so I'm not using my hands at all because I don't want you to push your with your hands or pull with your hands because that's kind of pulling past where the act, the joint and the muscles actually can do it on their own from the hips and the abs, okay? So not only is this sort of, it's alignment corrective, it's also strengthening. Pulling and pushing. My left lower leg is parallel to the ground, not dropping down. Push, pull. Okay, good, relax that side, or that left foot down. Cross the left ankle now on the right knee, or the other one, I should say for some of you. Push that left knee away. If you can pull the right foot up off the floor, go for it, push, pull. Lengthen the back, relax your shoulders. If you're somehow kind of scrunching them up, let it relax. So I'm just timing each one of these for a minute. 
push pull. Make sure, by the way, I haven't said this in a long time, that the leg you're pulling up, in this case, my right thigh, my knee and my ankle are lined up, okay? That you're not tipping outward to the side or pulling inward. So I try to make sure the ankle and the foot are lined with the knee and the front of the hip joint. Push pull. My right foot is flexed. I don't flex my left one. I don't really need to, but maybe some people do with their knee. Okay, right foot goes down. Feet are hip width apart. Let your knees go left to right like windshield wipers, okay? So I'm keeping the feet at that hip width apart. I'm gonna turn this way so you can see. And I'm just letting the knees drop to one side, then the other. And my head, it's nice, it's kind of natural, your head goes in the opposite direction of your knees. Or it can. Back and forth. Okay, so now, left foot straight out. You're going to grab under your right knee, or just hold it up. Big circles with the ankle. One, and slow, two, three. Really articulate the ankle, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We're gonna go to 20, 13, 14, 15, 16. By the way, my left leg is engaged. 17 by pulling the ankles, ankle back, 19, and one more, and there's 20. Now the other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, one more is 20. Now point and flex, one, two, three, four, five. Burning it, six, <laughs> seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Good. Okay, switch sides. Right leg straight, ankles flexed, tight thighs even tight. Two. Three. It doesn't have to be, but I really encourage you to do that. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The slower you go, the more you're going to build strength. There's 12, 13 from the foot all the way up the leg. And ideally, it's going to work your quad. Okay. Four more. One, two, Three, there's 20. Other direction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 15, 16, 17, I'm giggling because I know you guys are burning if you're doing it slowly, 18, 19, 20, and now point and flex, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay, good. Frog. So the soles of the feet go together, knees drop out. Ta-da. Relax there. 
lengthen the back. I'm going to turn this way so you can see. Okay. okay I'm just going to move around a little bit because I need to check the time. How in the heck does it go by this quickly? Oh my God. We got to get some, we got to get the core abs in. Okay, so while you're in this frog position, or if it's, you know, anytime you can come out of frog, if it, if it bugs you, elbows out to the side. This is reverse press position. Squeeze and release the shoulder blades. So the shoulder blades squeeze together and a little bit down and squeeze and release. Squeeze and release. Squeeze, release. You're really pulling in, releasing. I'm gonna bring my knees up. I'm tired of the frog. <laughs> squeeze, release. Squeeze, release. Squeeze and release. Squeeze, release. Good. One more. There you go. Nice. Now let's go around your uh, stomach. Let's do the uh, core abs again. Or again. Again. I mean, you know, not today again. All right. So. If you're going to do it on your feet, we're going to go full out into a curl your toes under and come up. Or if you're just doing it off your knees, that's fine as well. Okay, so, all right, let me just get this so you can see. I'm going to bring my elbows a little bit wider than my shoulder joint, maybe right under it. And timer is started, tight thighs. Now, the big thing for, that I like to teach and this is going to take, I'm just doing it quick in class here, but I tighten my thighs. I want to keep my body looking like it actually has, I'm standing up, not standing up and looking like a hunchback. So most people do it with their hands together, which curls the rib cage forward, tightens the pecs. Yes, it does engage the abs, but guess what? Not very efficiently. So tighten the thighs. Lengthen through the spine, drop your chest. If you can rotate the forearms out with your hands to pull the shoulder blades together, you're going to activate your abs a lot more. We're going for a full minute. Full minute of them. I know I can do it. You guys probably already were in it. Okay, relax down. 30 seconds on each side. So if you're going to stack your feet, great. You can bend your knees and do it off your knees. Make sure your elbow is right underneath your shoulder joint. Your shoulders are stacked. Or you can do this off your hand if people <clears throat> don't like it on their elbow. Make sure the ankles, the knees, the hips are all in line with the shoulders. Reaching up, flexing the ankles, tightening the thighs. Same idea, like you're standing up on the ground. So you don't want to be all curled forward like a banana. No banana bodies. <laughs> ah. Okay, 30 seconds right there. Let's switch to the other side. We just have so many exercises, so little time, so I think at least in. Okay. Flex the ankles, tighten the thighs, push up, reach to the top of your head. Just to change it, it's hard to do, smile. Make a kooky face, anything. Just get yourself like into the body, <clears throat> focused on what you're doing and focused away from maybe how grueling something is. <laughs> okay, awesome, relax down. 30 seconds on each side. So let me just look at the time again. Oh good, we have five minutes. Let's do this, come up into a seated position, okay. So my legs are going to be out in front of me. If you need to sit on a yoga block to give your hamstrings more room, okay? If they're really tight, I highly recommend this. Okay. <clears throat> Left leg is tight. Ankles flexed. I'm going to pull my right knee in. So, <clears throat> excuse me, push through the left heel, sit up really tall, okay? Let's put the right foot right over the left knee. You can also keep it on the same side. You don't have to do this. And then we're going to turn to the right. So bring your hands. I'm going to turn this way so you can see. Behind you, sit up as tall as you can. My left elbow's on my knee that's bent. And I'm pushing up through my hand. 
If you need to put a block under your hand, that's also okay. <clears throat> I go up on my fingertips. Um, some people, it doesn't feel comfortable that way, whatever it takes. I feel like you can really sit up tall. Remember, the left leg is tight. I'm going to turn this way so you can see. Okay, so the ankles flex, thigh is tight. I'm looking over my right shoulder. I'm pushing upward through my spine. I want to be nice and tall so that my spine can turn. Okay, I don't want to be smudged down like this, trying to force it. Really just activate through the pelvis all the way up to the top of your head. Good. Relax out of that side. Let's go to the other side. Now my right leg is tight. I'm going to pull up on my left knee so I can really feel the, my sits bones. Left foot goes over the knee if you can. You're going to turn to the left. My left hand is behind me. Tighten the right thigh. Push through the heel. Sit up as tall as you can. Make sure this left, this foot that's on, on the other side of your knee is flat on the floor. Looking over the shoulder, push to that right heel, nice and tight in the right thigh. Don't let your leg get lazy. Nice deep breaths. Lengthen through the spine, right up from the pelvis all the way to the top of your head. Okay, good. Relax out of that. Let's do this. <clears throat> Let's do the air bench. Um, if that doesn't feel like a good idea, you guys that know the air bench, go for it. I'm just going to show this real quick. You can do sitting knee pillow squeezes like this or abductor presses. With, that's where the strap is around your knees. Okay. Let's do that air bench. And if anybody has a good joke, I don't feel ready to tell mine because I don't know that I have it straight. <laughs> I'm gonna bring this a little closer. Do it, do Okay, so if you're doing the air bench, <clears throat> walk the feet out so that the ankles and the knees are stacked over each other. Climbing. So you don't have to go all the way down to 90 degrees, but you can. I'm being careful because I'm slipping again today. There we go. Okay, so flat lower back. <clears throat> Weights in the heels. Knees and ankles are stacked over each other, so you're not going to have a weird shearing force on the knee. Dad, I have a joke. Yes. Can you okay. hear me? Yes. Go, Anita. And mom goes into his, her son's bedroom to wake him up for church on Sunday. She says, son, get up. It's time to get ready for church. He says, I'm not going to church. Two reasons. Number one, Nobody there likes me. And number two, I don't like anybody there. The mother says, you are going to church. And here are two reasons. You're 49 years old and you're the minister. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> oh my God, that is fantastic. <laughs> I love it. That, that's a great joke. I have a, a added revelation through the uh, some of the exercises. Do, do you want me to share it now or offline or afterwards or? Um, let's see. Pro let's do it offline only because. Okay. No, it's okay. Gotcha. Okay. Right? It's not okay. major, but it's a revelation for me. Love it. I love it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. 30 seconds. And I'm not the minister. <laughs> <laughs> you are. <laughs> today. Today. Well, you know, it's like a dual, it's teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> Wait in the heels. Ah, uh, yes. Press the low back into the wall. 15 seconds. You know, you can go down and then come back up if it's like burning at 90 degrees, which it was for me. Okay, that's awesome. Come out of that. Now, test. I'm going to move this back. The hangover. Oh. And that's awesome. You guys have a fantastic, super 